Well, thanks, everybody, and thanks for sharing your time with me on a Friday afternoon as we will talk today about not only creating aesthetic restorations using silver diamond fluoride, but also give you a little bit of history on silver diamond fluoride, talk to you about how to really put together an ideal class two, even without silver fluoride, and then we're going to go ahead and do a class two for those that are participating in the hands-on portion. And we're going to flip to a visualizer where we're going to go step by step and do what I would call a state-of-the-art class one, actually, restoration. So I want to thank SDI for graciously sponsoring this hands-on program. And I also want to thank Clinician's Choice for providing for the ones that are going to be doing the hands-on, the ASAP Daily Polishers, which you have a sample of, which are outstanding polishers as well. I like friends, so please feel free to friend me. Uh, on Instagram at Vino Dentino, where we talk about great technology, new technology, but most importantly, fine wine, including fine Napa wine. So please feel free to friend me at Vino Dentino. I'm also a proud board member of Catapult Education. And as you know, Catapult is sponsoring this program today. We're 20 something key opinion leaders that speak, teach, consult with many manufacturers on a variety of levels. Uh, it is an honor to sit on the board of Catapult Education. So I get to make some decisions for the overall group and the relationships we've made both as colleagues as well as colleagues to manufacturers really are second to none. So here are some brief goals for this afternoon's presentation. Number one, I wanna introduce all of you to the use of silver fluoride maybe the hottest topic in dentistry. I also want to uh, show you a step-by-step -step approach for direct restorative dentistry using silver fluoride, and then also a step-by-step -step approach to a multi-step class two or class one or class three restoration. And then we're going to do a hands-on. So let's first talk about you know managing dental caries, which is one of the hardest things I would say we have in our practice today. We try different things, but when someone has a lot of caries, things like rinses, medicaments, creams, gels, all those things collectively make an effort, but there's not a magic bullet yet that helps stop the progression of disease. I've always spoken about supplements, probiotics, creams and gels and fluorides, and they're all great but caries is the hardest thing for us to control in our profession. There was a product that was brought into dentistry in the early 1900s by a gentleman by the name of Percy Howe. And Percy Howe was the director of Foresight. And back then he used a product called silver fluoride to arrest decay. What they found was in the early studies was that there was a strong anti-caries effect of silver fluoride. But they also showed that silver fluoride and or silver diamond fluoride, we're gonna use those two terms interchangeably, caused black staining of teeth. The black staining comes from the reduction of silver ions to metallic silver and silver oxide. So while it worked really, really well in arresting decay, it stained teeth. And for many people, that was too unsightly. So it fell out of favor in dentistry for many years until about six, seven years ago, when the resurgence started coming back for trying to find a minimally invasive way to control disease. How does silver fluoride work? Well, the early studies showed that silver fluoride can inhibit the progression of decay and enamel and dentin are much harder and less soluble after the application. What they also, what, what the studies also show is that if you looked at the teeth histologically, Dentin that's been treated with silver fluoride revealed significant remineralization through odontoblastic activity. As dentistry now has progressed and silver fluoride has really become more into the forefront of what we do, we're starting to see more and more science come out in the area of silver fluoride and, and caries prevention. 
So here's a study that was done in 2019, and they found that direct comparisons of silver diamond fluoride that were applied once a year with alternative treatments showed that silver fluoride is more effective than other topical fluorides placed two to four times per year and more cost effective than dental sealants. So now starting to reveal the efficacy of the use of silver fluoride. Studies also showed they found mineral loss of demineralized enamel and dentin were reduced after silver fluoride treatment. They also found a highly mineralized surface rich in calcium and phosphate. And four studies examined the effect of silver fluoride on dentin collagen, and they found that silver fluoride inhibited collagenases, which are matrix metalloproteinases, and protected dentin collagen from destruction. So the more and more studies that have been coming out collectively show that silver fluoride strengthens teeth, yet, yet the teeth will still look like this. Enter Revastar. Revastar is a product from uh, Southern Dental Industries, SDI, which is the next generation silver diamine fluoride. What makes this different than any other product on the market is, of course, there's a silver fluoride component to the process, but there's also a secondary application of potassium iodide. And while potassium iodide has no effect on the ability of the silver fluoride to neutralize decay, it has a profound effect on minimizing or eliminating the darkness of the or the grayness that occurs at the silver fluoride application. So it's a secondary application that kind of works in the background by eliminating or minimizing the dark stain of teeth due to silver fluoride application. We all know that the FDA makes things really, really difficult despite so much science. And we have to be clear that Riva Star is indicated not for caries arrest, but for the treatment of dental hypersensitivity because silver fluoride is a phenomenal product. Riva Star, a phenomenal product for the reduction of dental sensitivity. So class five erosions, it's a great product for that, for that indication. But anecdotally, off-label, this product works great in deep cavity preparations for reduction of sensitivity and also for to help in arresting a decay process. It's a patented two-step procedure. And by do, following the exact protocol, you get an aesthetically acceptable tooth colored appearance of the restoration. Here's just a quick example. And you can see here silver fluoride with self clear glass enamel on the left. This is a regular silver diamine fluoride with a self cured glass enamel. You see the staining around the restoration. It doesn't mean there's decay, it just means there's stain due to the silver precipitate in the caries. And on the right, you have Riva Star with a self-cure glass enamel, and notice you have little to no staining on that restoration. So what we also see is by pre-treating teeth with silver fluoride, it actually enhances the bonding of auto-cure glass enamel cements. So this is a study done by Jeff Knight, and what they found was the application of Revastar to carious dentin will not create an SDF type stain immediately, but will eventually stain due to sulfur compounds becoming deposited into the carious dentin, causing a brown stain. Carious dentin will not stain with your star application if the decayed surface has been correctly prepared and the decay covered with an auto cure glass ionomer cement. So let's be clear you clean the decay, get all the mushy stuff off, apply the silver fluoride as per the manufacturer instructions, mix an auto cure glass enamel, or place that on top. And then depending on the tooth, the situation, the dental IQ of the patient, the patient's diet and so on and so forth, you can backfill the entire preparation with glass enamel, or you can place glass enamel over the Riva Star. Let that set. 
and then go through an adhesive protocol and place a composite over the glass ionomer. So ideally when using silver fluoride, here's the protocol you wanna follow. You wanna remove the soft carries with an excavator. You wanna etch the dentin for five seconds, wash and dry. You apply the silver fluoride gray capsule with the gray capsule on the kit. You apply it with a micro brush in multiple coats, saturate the dentin. And then right over that, apply the potassium iodide. When you apply the potassium iodide over the silver fluoride, what you're gonna see is a chemical reaction. You're gonna see that clear silver fluoride. That's what it looks like when it goes on. It looks clear. You're gonna see that clear silver fluoride uh, when mixed with the potassium iodide, turn dical color, it precipitates. When you continue to apply the potassium iodide, that color will turn clear once again. And when that's happened, it's neutralized the graying potential of that silver fluoride. You rinse that off, apply your glass onomer on top, let that set, and then either go through an adhesive protocol or backfill the entire preparation with glass tonomer. So again, plenty of science behind using silver fluoride. And this is a study that looked at caries arrest and lesion appearance using two different silver fluoride therapies, one with and without potassium iodide. And what they found was that the combination of silver fluoride and potassium iodide was associated with the most favorable clinical outcomes in terms of caries arrest and lesion color. So they've bulked that into one group. Here's what the kit looks like. They've made it what I call dentist proof. The silver capsule has silver fluoride. The green capsule has potassium iodide. Let's take you through a technique. We remove some old fillings. We total etch and rinse off. We're going to apply silver fluoride, then apply the potassium iodide, then apply our glass onomer on top. And this was a special needs patient. We polished those off, and those were final restorations on that patient. Let me show you a quick video, and I'm going to jump out of here and show you a quick video that you'll be able to get a better idea of how this protocol works. Now, notice also that when using silver fluoride on extracted teeth, excuse me, on the models, you're not gonna get a precipitate. You're only gonna see the precipitate in the oral cavity, but let's let this video play through. My name is Ron Kaminer, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about Reba Star and how to use it clinically in a restorative technique. Reba Star is a silver fluoride product, and for years, silver fluoride was used for caries management dating back to 1912. It fell out of favor because silver fluoride, when it arrested decay, turned teeth black. Well, lo and behold, SDI brings to the market Revastar, a silver fluoride with potassium iodide that minimizes the ability of teeth to turn black. Now, in other countries, very often it's used in a technique where it's placed on the dentin, and then a glass sonoma restoration is placed over it. Here in the States, we want an aesthetic restoration. And because of that, I'm gonna show you how to use this in an adhesive technique. So we're gonna go here clinically, and this is our Reaver Star capsules, silver for the silver fluoride, green for the potassium iodide. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to total etch the preparation for a short period of time. Literally, we don't need much more than eight seconds or so, and I'm gonna total etch this. I'm gonna leave that on for eight to 10 seconds. While that's setting, I'm gonna go ahead and just have my assistant grab her suction, and I'm gonna go ahead and just rinse it off. I'm gonna dry it thoroughly. And now I'm gonna place my silver fluoride. So I'm gonna break the capsule with the back end, and I'm gonna liberally apply silver fluoride onto the dentin. Now Reva Star acts as a desensitizing agent, an outstanding desensitizing agent. 
And that is technically what its FDA approval is for. Um, many people use silver fluoride for caries arrest and caries management, but technically it's a desensitizing agent. So I've applied it liberally, multiple coats on the dentin. And if I were just to rinse that off and leave it alone and put a restoration on it, the restoration would turn black. What I'm going to do now is apply potassium iodine. The potassium iodide undergoes a chemical reaction with the silver fluoride. And as it undergoes a chemical reaction in the mouth, this will turn a dical like color, almost yellowish. And I, when I keep applying it, it'll turn back clear. Obviously here on the model, it doesn't do that, but in your mind's eye, you can figure what happens. So I'm putting multiple coats now of the potassium iodide. And once that's sufficiently coated the silver fluoride, I'm then gonna rinse that off. I'm then gonna rinse that off very, very quickly. I'm gonna suction that. And now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply glass ionomer onto the dental floor. So my assistant is titrating a compule of Riva that we're gonna apply onto the dentin as the base layer. And what I'm gonna show you here is a tri-level restorative technique. So after we apply Riva, Riva self-cure, glass onomer onto the dentin, I'm then gonna let that set, apply an adhesive on top, SDI zip bond, light cure that, let that set, and then apply flow and a final restorative. So we have a tri-level adhesive restoration that has silver fluoride underneath. Clinically, when I've done these, I can tell you that there's, very, there's little to no staining of that residual dentin. So I'm gonna just apply a little bit onto the dentinal floor, just like so. I'm gonna take a ball burnisher and I'm gonna wet it just with a little bit of water not alcohol when we use glass onomer, and I'm just gonna tamp that down right into place. And you can kind of see that as it tamps down right onto the dentin. And now we wait, we keep it dry and we let it sit. Reva will set, the fast will set pretty quickly, well under a minute. And what I'll then do is I'll go back and I'll check with my bowl burnisher every so often on the consistency. I see it's still wet, but I'll press it just down into place and we let it sit. Remember, I've total etched the preparation. So my enamel margins are etched. My dent on the floor was etched. I have now dried it. The next step that I'm gonna now do once Riva has set is I'm gonna apply zip bond to the entire preparation, internal walls, enamel margin, and apply zip bond. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my zip bond, my glass onomer is pretty well set, and I'm gonna apply zip bond everywhere. Onto my internal walls, onto my preparations. I'm gonna apply that, really coating that dentin, really agitating it into the dentinal walls, I'm then going to air dry it. First slowly, and then vigorously. And then I'm going to light cure the restoration. So now we've cured our adhesive in place. I want to apply one layer of Aura Easy Flow. The beautiful thing about Easy Flow, it's it has great consistency to it. So I'm going to apply it right over my glass ionomer, small amount, running up to my dentinal walls. I don't even need to touch it. I'm going to light cure that as well.
I'm then going to apply Aura right on top. I'm going to take just a ball burnisher here. I'm going to tamp it down into place. I have a little bit of wetting resin on there so materials don't stick on me. I'm going to remove all that excess. Trying to work around my videographer, it's always fun. Now I'd be using SDI's curing light right now, but my hygienist is placing sealants and she's using the light. But I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off this restoration. handling of that aura is really, really nice. And we're just about through. I'm gonna hit that now with the curing light. And if you follow this technique specifically, you will see that most of the time, almost all the time, you'll have absolutely no graying of the tooth, no discoloration, but you'll have a desensitized preparation and the silver fluoride will assist you in caries management. So that's pretty, well uh, detailed on how you can use silver fluoride and create that restoration that ideally you want to achieve. So I showed you how to use a composite. Let's give you a little bit of science behind a composite over the glass ionomer and over the silver fluoride. So first of all, we would think we want to be concerned about bond strengths. This study was done and looked at the effect of silver fluoride on the microtensile bond strength dentin. Silver fluoride does not adversely affect the bond strength of resin composite to non-carious dent. Very important. So we look for an adhesive that we can use in all situations and SDI Zipon kind of fits the bill. So whether you are total etching whether you are selective etching, as I typically do, or self-etching, zip bond will work really well in all those in, in all those situations. So you do not have to change the way you're doing your restorative dentistry because you may consider changing the material. So what zip bond doesn't have, it doesn't have an, an unpleasant odor, which some of the materials we know do. And uh, you get consistent bond strengths to enamel and dentin. We're also going to demo for you, and you're going to work with the hands-on uh, with the Aura composite, Aura Easy, and the Aura Easy Flow. And the Aura Easy, I'm not going to tell you, it takes a learning curve because it doesn't, but it's different than other composites that you've played with because you really have four unique shades that kind of run the gamut with a chameleon-like effect with many other shades. So you don't really need to stock all those other shades that you kind of never use and you use for other, other procedures. So it kind of works like this. The AE1 will cover you for A1 and B1. The AE2 will cover you for A2 and B2. The AE3 will cover you for A3 and B3. And the AE4 will cover you for A35 and B4. So it, you really get a lot of coverage when you look at these particular four shades, if you will, in the gamut of shades it's gonna cover. You get this very unique chameleon effect. And I'll show you two cases today. One my associate did, which the result was nice, but the chameleon effect was not as nice because they just, pick the wrong shade out of these, but then show you the true chameleon effect, how you can get a result when you do pick the right shades. 
The beautiful thing of you like the handling of this material is you also have the ability to use Aura Easy Flow. And we're going to work with that today as well. It, it really is a nice flowable because really the way it handles, it flows out of the syringe easily. You can manipulate it slightly. It has high radio opacity, so you can see it on a radiograph. And you still have a chameleon effect if you're going to use it, let's say, in an OL or a buckle or something like that. So we begin to now look at restorative dentistry in a different fashion because are all cavities the same? They're not all the same. So the indications may be different. So here's what I do in my office to give you a recipe or a cookbook so you have an understanding. If I have a deep lesion with no exposure, I will use silver fluoride followed by glass onomer, if you will, followed by composite or silver fluoride followed by uh, a, some sort of an RMGI and composite. But what if I have a deep lesion with a pinpoint exposure? You don't really wanna put silver fluoride on the pulp. In that situation, I'll place a calcium liner on the exposure, such as Theracal from Bisco, then my silver fluoride, then my glass ionomer, and then my composites. So I'll, I'll tweak the protocol based on the situation, that becomes really the most important thing is customizing the protocol based on the situation that you're gonna be in. So let's walk you through this clinical case. And this was my, the case my associate did. And there was class two, a class two cavity. And one of the things that we start to see when we look in these situations is that we see not only a class two, but what may be hard for you to see is when we open up this class two, there's a defect on the mesial wall here of this molar that you could not see on the radiograph. And this is the, unfortunately, the shortcomings of our digital radiographs. And I'll tell patients sometimes there could be something on the tooth next to it. But if I'm in there, I'll try to do it in a minimally invasive fashion. So there is something there. And here, we don't want to remove this big marginal ridge. I'm going to go ahead and just basically tunnel and remove this out and just restore this as its own restoration and then go back to the bicuspid and restore the bicuspid. So you could see here, I've left the marginal ridge intact, but removed the interproximal enamel and dentin where the decay was present. Now, in this situation, do I need silver fluoride? No, because it's not that deep. So I don't necessarily need to put silver fluoride or even a glass ionomer here or anything like that. I can go and restore this with Zipon, Etch Zipon and Aura Easy Flow. I can use Etch Zipon and Aura Easy. It really depends on your preference, but I don't need silver fluoride for this restoration nor for the class two, which is not that deep. I restored the proximal wall my associate did with Etch bond and aura easy flow. Now we get, we restore that first, we get to the proximal box. This is a garrison matrix in place. And if you're not using, or you haven't used sectional matrices, you don't know what you're missing. Sectional matrices really, really do a, give you an opportune time, not only to get ideal proximal contacts, but also to create ideal proximal contour. So we use either the garrison system or we use the, the uh, dual force system from clinician's choice or the triadent system from ultradent. Any of these will work really, really well to give you your ideal contact. Once again, you see here, selective edge. So I like to selective edge. So that's what I taught my associate. This is selective edge of the enamel anywhere between five and 10 seconds. That's all you really need is uh, five to 10 seconds. Now, could you do this just using Zipon? The answer is yes, but I don't think anybody would lie to tell you that any of the universal adhesives out there today, the bond strengths alone to enamel are never as good as if you etched that enamel. And the two key things to avoiding white spots, as you'll see, is number one, etching enamel, and number two, beveling that enamel. So etching that enamel and beveling that enamel will allow you to create invisible restorations. You'll see it in the next case. Zip bond being applied. 
I like to see when we cure the zip on, I like to see a shiny surface to know that I have everything in, covered up and in place. And here's the final restoration. Now here was what they should have done here is use the AE2, my associate used the AE1. Still nice, doesn't have that chameleon effect, but a nice restoration. Watch what happens here when uh, you pick the right shade. And here you see occlusal decay. You see a worn restoration here with no decay. We left that. You see occlusal decay in this restoration. We removed the restoration. And again, it wasn't that deep. So no need here for silver fluoride. Here I am beveling the occlusal enamel. I'm using a red stripe football diamond at 45 degrees to create that bevel on the occlusal enamel. And I don't need a big bevel, I just need enough to bevel that enamel to avoid that white line. You can kind of see here what the enamel looks like when it's beveled. You can see the bevel here. You can definitely see the bevel here. And you see that little bit of enamel removed from the bevel in place. We select the etch once again, five to 10 seconds. We apply zip bond per the instructions. That's what, zip bond looks like when it's cured properly and in place. You see a shiny coating or a shiny surface that makes it very easy for you to know that you have adhesive in all aspects of your preparation. Next thing we do is you place a layer of Aura Easy Flow on the floor. Aura Easy Flow on the floor, why I want ideal adaptation on that floor. I also wanna have no bubbles and, I, and I'll even run this up on the sides a little bit of the walls and then I will cure that. And then in multiple steps, I'll place Aura Easy in the preparation. Now you can see this one kind of disappears into that preparation and that's just placement, I didn't polish it yet. Here I'm using Clinician's Choice ASAP Dailies. The ASAP Dailies are a daily polisher. It's a two-step polisher that'll give you high shine to your restorations. You all have a sample of that. And if you like them, you can get them from Henry Shine. So that's what the restoration looks like polish. And you kind of see when you're beveling that enamel and polishing the restoration, you can see the flash coming off. The, the, it, it really just disappears into that particular tooth. And that's the beautiful thing about this material. Here's a quick, some quick information about the dailies. And, and they come in a purple and a pink. It's a two-step polisher. The purple is a pre-polisher. The pink is the high polisher. So, and you can use these both on direct restoratives as well as indirect restoratives, such as composite ceramics and zirconia. So these are, to me, there's some real good polishers on the, on the, on the market. Shofu makes some good stuff, of course, but these are also phenomenal polishers that you can incorporate. And, you, and the ones you're using here today, you can bring them to the office and they, they'll still be good. Even though it says daily for what you're gonna do with them here, you can totally bring them to the office. Since we won't even demo that here, you're gonna be demoing that on your own. You can either polish them or wait for restoration in your office to polish. Take you through the quick polishing. I'm gonna so I'm gonna take you through a quick uh, demonstration of polishing this composite that we just placed on the model. So I'm going to go ahead and polish this with what I feel is some of the best polishers in the dental industry. There are a few companies that make great polishers. This is one of them. And these are polishers from Clinician's Choice. Clinician's Choice makes the ASAP polishers, both for indirect and direct restorations. You can tell the difference from indirect and direct by the color of the shank. If the shank is a silver tone it's going to be for direct if it's a gold tone it's going to be for indirect so this will work well on zirconia and lithium disilicate and hybrid ceramics but if you had the silver tone of these they would also work well um, ideally for uh, direct restorations clinician's choice also has these that we call them the dailies and these dailies are disposable polishers that we can use to polish our direct restorations and i'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick and there's a purple and a pink very simply uh you're going to go ahead we've dialed down the rpms on our electric handpiece and we're just going to go ahead and just lightly go through our restoration if you had to finish this first you could use a gold-shaped restorative uh, uh gold-shaped burr to contour your restorative 
And we typically like to use these types of burrs from microcopy because I can go ahead and blend my anatomy very, very easily. So microcopy makes these great gold polishing burrs and they're just dynamite. The next part, once I've gone through my purple, I'm gonna go ahead now and use my pink. And the pink is gonna give it its high shine. So I'm at 20,000 RPMs again. And of course, we're working off a model, but all you have to do is kinda of run through it a little bit and give it a little dry. And I think you can kind of see that this restorative now has a good shine to it and a nice luster to it. And we can go ahead once again and even give it another turn here. I have my light on now. I can see it. So these polishes will work well. What we're gonna do now for the next few minutes is we're gonna to jump to the hands-on. And I wanna tell you that you have two kits. For those that are doing hands-on, you have two kits in your hands-on. The one that says kit two that has the silver fluoride inside, that is for you to take to your office and use on your patients. We're gonna work off kit one and you're going to be able to have one that you can go ahead and bring back to the office on Monday morning and actually use it clinically. So that's a real thank you from SDI for, for doing that and allowing you to have product to take care back to your practice. So I'm just going to quickly move my seat, let you all of you get settled, kind of set this up a little bit and take you through the clinical portion of what we're gonna do here in the hands-on. Now, I kind of have, I brought some instruments from home. This is my home office. I'm not gonna be using gloves because I don't need to, I'm not working on a patient. And, but the goal is for you to just follow the technique so you can kind of just see pretty well what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. So we take, we have here our extracted tooth and for our purposes, of course, it's our typodon or our model. And I'm gonna get some light for you guys too. There we go. So the first thing that when I approach a class one, let's say, or a class two, is I'm gonna make sure that I've remembered to bevel that preparation. So I'm gonna take my football diamond. Let me get you even a better shot here. There we go. And I'm gonna get you really a beveling diamond that I can basically run at a 45 degree angle to my occlusal. And I'm able now to make sure my prep is totally beveled. So let's assume we've beveled our preparation. Next thing we're gonna do is take phosphoric acid etch. Uh, anyone's etch will work, but take your phosphoric acid etch and you're going to apply it. Let me get my loops on so I can actually see. And you're going to apply it onto the enamel in a selective edge fashion. So we've applied the selective edge onto our onto our occlusal enamel. Now, if you if you are a total etch person and you want to total etch this, be my guest. You can totally total etch. I'm not telling you how you should do your dentistry. So if you want to total etch, you can totally, totally uh, total etch this. Now, I don't, I'm here in my home office. I don't have uh, access to an air water. So I'm just gonna wipe this down with alcohol, get all the blue stuff out. Imagine I washed it off. I'm gonna air dry it really, really well. And I want to touch on air drying. We'll talk about air drying adhesive in a second because I think that bears some discussion. Next thing I'm going to do is take zip bond. And I'm going to take the zip bond that we have in our kit. 
nice the way they package this. I'm going to crack this open nice and easy. And I'm going to liberally apply zip bond. Now, if you were going to use silver fluoride before this zip bond, the step would be applying your silver fluoride. But I'm doing, going a preparation now that we're not going to use silver fluoride. But if we were going to use silver fluoride, we would have total etched this, rinsed it, applied silver fluoride, and applied a glass isomer, and then go through this step now. So now I'm going to take my, my brush tip. I'm going to apply liberally onto the enamel and dentin. And I'm going to go ahead and really, I like to vigorously agitate my brush. Now, one of the things I talk to very often when I teach a young dentist is if the manufacturer says 20 seconds, it's got to be 20 seconds. All these universal adhesives work by the agitation into the enamel and dentin. That's how these things work. And that's how they work really, really well. So I'm going to continually agitate, make sure my enamel and dentin are coated, 20 seconds. Here's a critical step, and here's a mistake that many dentists make. How do you dry these or dry the adhesive off? Now, first you have to understand why are you drying the preparation? You're drying the preparation for two reasons. Number one, you're drying initially to evaporate the monomer. Every universal adhesive has some sort of monomer, and that's to be evaporated off. The second part of that is you're thinning that adhesive. Now, if I went ahead and I take this tip and I go full force into this, what am I going to do? I'm going to blow most of this in 10 different directions. I may evaporate, but I may pull some out the dentin. So typically what I'll do is take the air water syringe, and I'm going to try to see if we can back this up now so I can show this to you, because I think it's really, really important. Typically, what I'll do is I'm going to start further away and I'm going to lightly air dry with my air water syringe and I have air going through. And then I'm going to gradually bring my air water syringe closer and then hit it with full blast. Because what did I do? Well, when I was here, I evaporated the monomer. When I got here, I was thinning the adhesive. So once I've done that, I'm then going to light cure this. And this is the radii light from SDI. It's a great light. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cure that for a full 20 seconds. Do not cheat this. So many dentists think they can get away with doing this for five or eight or nine seconds. Cure this for the full 20 seconds and do not cheat this step. Changing the way you blow that adhesive and changing the way you're curing could be the difference between a sensitive restoration and a non-sensitive restoration. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my flowable into my restoration. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of flowable into the base of the prep. I'm going to take a plastic instrument and I like to move that flowable around and even run a little bit on those side walls. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any bubbles and I'm going to run this on my side walls. Let's see if I can show you this. My side walls have some flowable here on it. Let me get you a little zoom here so you can kind of see that, that my side walls have some flowable on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and once again, cure that. Now, this may seem simplistic to some, but I'm telling you the key, my associate has been doing this for 10 years, still get sensitive, sensitivity issues a lot, and I rarely get them. And I'm not using any kind of materials to eliminate that as a general rule. I'm just following technique. Now, Depending on the depth of your preparation, one of two things are going to happen. You can incrementally fill this, which I will do here. I'm going to add a little bit of composite here. This is Aura Easy. And I'm going to go ahead and take a ball burnisher. I like to use in these situations either some wetting resin or, some, or, or something, because that's just what I'm used to doing. And Reva, uh, you can use SDI's Reva Coat if you want. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just tamp this fully down into place.
making sure I compress this. I don't want any bubbles. And I'm gonna go ahead and compress that fully down into place. I'm gonna cure that. Once again, for the full 20 seconds. And then I'm going to follow up with my last layer of composite. I'd like to overfill in these situations. And I'm still a big fan of using plastic instruments and also acorn burnishers. This is an acorn that I like to use because it allows me to compress and massage the material, but also to create some anatomy. So I'll use this to create some anatomy, taking away some excess. I can make my grooves and so on and so forth. Using the sides of the acorn. And you can kind of see that I'm beginning just to get some anatomy in here. Use my ball here to just smooth things off. And you can play with this now as much as you want, creating anatomy or not. It just really depends on how much you want to put into this. Place a groove. And another. And another, just creating some basic anatomy in here. And then once again, cure that. Now, once you've done this, now you can go ahead. If you're in your operatories now, you could use those dailies to polish. And those will work quite nicely. But the goals here were for you to follow some clean steps to improve your posterior restorative technique, keeping in mind that if you wanted to add the silver florets, when you do this back now at home, and when you wanted to add the silver fluoride, then you would go ahead and, and just create your preparation, total etch, apply your silver fluoride, apply your potassium iodide, wait for that reaction to occur. So waiting for that precipitate to occur. Once the precipitate occurs, what you want to do is continue to apply the potassium iodide, putting multiple coats till that precipitate, which is dical-like in color, becomes clear. Rinse that off. Apply your glass ionomer. Wait for it to set. Then go through the adhesive protocol that I just showed you with Zip-On, Aura Easy Flow, and Aura Easy, and then polish. So the goal today really was to kind of spruce up your technique a little bit and give you some takeaways to improve your, your skills. And what I'm going to do now is for the last 10, 8 minutes or so, I'm gonna open the floor up for question and answer. I'm gonna get into the chat in a second. I'm gonna do that. Why do you need a layer of flow on your base? So the answer is, do you need a layer of flow? You really don't if you're confident. So let me back up. Many dentists will take a cavity prep like what you just saw, shove a bunch of composite in there, condense it down, and hope it works. The reality is we've all seen restorations on radiographs where we, where we see a void. And where do we see a void? Always on the gingival box or the floor of that gingival box or the floor of the cavity preparation. Because inevitably, we don't get complete compression of the restorative 
Now, if you put a drop of restorative or easy in there, a drop, and, and you're sure you've condensed it everywhere, you probably don't need it. Me, for belt and suspenders and security, I like the flowable for ideal adaptation. And that way I know my floor is totally covered. So when I take a radiograph for my restorations, I'm not gonna see the void that we commonly see. Now, the problem is when we see that void is, all right, is it a void or is it decay? Inevitably, most dentists were gonna open up that preparation and sometimes it's not decay, it's just a pure void of the composite. So what I will tell you is I still like the fact of, of having that flowable on there. So that's why I do it that way. Can I apply Riva Star on the, on, on the primary incisor cavities? I mean, will it stain the incisors afterwards? The answer is if you do not, let's say you have an uncooperative child. And that's a good question, Dr. Zeng. Let's say you have an uncooperative child. There's tons of decay and they, you can't get them to cooperate. And you apply Riva Star, it will stain. If you're able to get a spoon excavator in there and get most of that out, or all of it out, and apply Riva Star, and then your glass onomer, then you will, you will have a clean restoration. Otherwise, if you've applied over mushy dentin, it will stain. Despite using the two-step Riva system, I am getting a gray shadow along my re restoration enamel margin. I'm sure my enamel is sound. Why is this happening? So you will see some slight graying of the restoration in many instances. Now, it doesn't always happen, but in many instances you may. One of the tricks to that is if you want to eliminate that, place your glass onomer at the base and then go through your adhesive process, if you're using a composite, and run your flowable like I did right to the edge of the enamel and you'll eliminate that graying totally. If that's the only place you're seeing it, you can virtually eliminate that by running the flowable right up to the enamel margin. Have I, have I ever used biodentin instead of Theracal for direct exposures? Biodentin people say, um, biodentin people say not to use Theracal can cause problems. I've never had problems with Theracal. The problem with biodentin for me, it's a great product, by the way. It's a septodon product. It's a great product. Number one, it's a fortune of money, about 15 bucks per application. The second thing is the set time on biodentin is extremely, extremely long. So is it a great product? Yes. The working time, keeping it isolated for that long. If you're using a rubber dam, I guess it's fine. But if you're not using a rubber dam, keeping it isolated for that long might defeat the purpose of using the biodentin. Because if you get saliva in there, you've ruined everything. So another question is, um, is it better to apply the flowable as a liner without light curing and pack in composite to eliminate the potential voids? So there's a technique that was started in Europe where they would place flowable at the floor and then place composite over it. And it does work. The problem is, if you think about it, the composite is much harder and the chance of displacing most of the flowable and getting to ooze up and into the rest of the composite out the prep, I think, really exists. So for me, it's cleaner. If you do what I just did and place some flowable on the floor and run an instrument through it, you will not get any voids at all and you won't have any issues. Any other questions? So I want to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. I hope I was able to shed some light on the use of silver fluoride, on the use of these great materials from SDI. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me uh, at, at Vino Dentino. And um, thanks again and have a great Friday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.